Tov Chavrim from here in Jerusalem. I'm Stephen Bindanoon with Israeli News Live. Jerusalem is getting a lot of interesting things going on, especially as the peace talks enter the final stage. As we know, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu refused to release the final uh, set of prisoners to the Palestinians. I applaud him for that. Don't think it'll last for long, but I thank God that at least he did refuse to do so. Recently, we had two visitors here in Jerusalem. It was two congressmen from the United States. One was, was Bill Johnson and the other David McKinley, uh, a congressman from the United States. David McKinley is from West Virginia and Congressman Bill Thomas, uh, or excuse me, Bill Johnson from uh, Ohio. Uh, they were here, they toured the state, uh, uh, got a special tour throughout the country here of, uh, of Israel. And, but then, secretly, they were taken up to the Temple Mount. Not so much secretly as far as that no one couldn't see them, but that no one realized who they were and that they were congressmen from the United States. They went up with uh, the Temple Mount Institute's uh, leader there, and as they went around with the Orthodox Jewish uh, brothers there, they felt firsthanded what it was like to be Jewish and to be persecuted for coming up on the Temple Mount. Every move that they had was watched, and they knew that if they even thought about trying to pray or bring out a Bible of any kind, they would be arrested and incarcerated by the Waqaf. That is the Palestinian police that guard that area up there. So the Israeli escort that they had, the police escort that they did have there, constantly had to keep telling them, move on, move on, you couldn't stop. They were totally shocked, completely amazed at what Jewish people go through. They were even mocked by women, Muslim women that were there freely worshiping on the Temple Mount. They began to mock them and say slurred word, uh, sl uh, despicable words to them for them being there. They said out of all the places in Israel they went, they were completely appalled at what was happening right there on the Temple Mount to the Jewish people. Anyone else, if you weren't Jewish or didn't, at least you didn't appear to be Jewish, you were completely free to do whatsoever you felt in your heart to do on the Temple Mount, and there was no problems regarding that. So, very interesting, and I'm glad to see that they got to feel that firsthand. Maybe they should give that some of that to John Kerry. You know, supposedly he is Jewish, but unfortunately I'm afraid that he's part of the Ahab group there. And even though we are a news source here, we don't worry about the political correctness. And that's one reason why the next gentleman that I'm about to tell you about, someone we've reported on before, Naftali Benet, or Naftali Bennett, however you want to pronounce his name, the housing minister here in Israel, he certainly has my heart excited all the time when it comes to things that go on in Jerusalem. In an interview, uh, an article posted by Israel's National News, Benet tells Kerry, Jerusalem building is no poof. Uh, very interesting article here. Economic Minister Naftali Benet fired back at U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry accusations before the Senate on Tuesday where he blamed Israel for responsibility over the collapse of the peace talks. Kerry criticized Israel, saying 700 settlement units were announced in Jerusalem. And poof, that was sort of the moment. His comment referred to a reissued call for tenders on over 700 housing units in the southern Jerusalem neighborhood of Gilo. Last Tuesday, a construction freeze on the Jewish building in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria was not preconditioned of the talks. Israel will never apologize for building in Jerusalem, struck back Benet. I heard that they defined the building in Jerusalem as proof, as poof. Many years they tried with poofs and booms and explosives to prevent us from living in the eternal capital of the Jewish people. That won't happen, Neftali replied. Building in Jerusalem isn't a poof. Building in Jerusalem is Zionism, declared Benet. Speaking before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Kerry blamed Israel for putting on hold the fourth and final batch of terrorist release set forth March 29th. 
The move followed the total lack of progress in peace talks and widespread protest to the unpopular release. You know, I think Mr. Carey would do him really good to go back and read the Bible. You know, I realize, too, he is Catholic. And unfortunately, he's following his puppet master, Pope Francis. That's right. That's his puppet master. And whatever, whenever he pulls the string, John Kerry, Secretary of State of the United States, has to dance the dance that Pope Francis makes him do. And of course, he's got Obama right there behind him with a little chain on him, making sure that he obeys. Guess that's not very politically correct either, is it? But nonetheless, the truth does hurt. Well, Mr. Kerry, as far as reading the Bible, you know, you, sir, claim to be a Christian. 2,000 years ago, Israel was in the same shoes you're in now. Release a murderer, or release the man that was the peacemaker, the man called Yeshua. Instead, Jerusalem, or Israel at that time, cried out that Barabbas be released. Isn't it strange, though, that it was Rome who did the releasing of the prisoner? And here again, it's Rome in the background pushing for the release of these murderers just to appease the Palestinians. Israel paid a heavy price for that. And Mr. Kerry, the United States will end up reaping, and so will Rome, the murderous spirit. That's exactly what it is. It's a murderous spirit. Yes, these murderers will be turned loose, and once again, they will try to attack Israel. But it's really symbolic, just like it was in the day of Barabbas. It wasn't so much that Barabbas was released. It was the spirit that was on Barabbas, that evil, demonic spirit, the murdering spirit that was turned loose on the Jews. And for the next 2,000 years, our people endured suffering like never before. Unfortunately, there's not 2,000 years left in this world. But one thing's for sure, judgment will come. This time it will come to the United States. And it will be a spirit. It will be a death spirit. Whereas years ago in Israel, Barabbas was a lone man released. You required over 100 to be released. And now, Mahmoud Abbas is requesting that more than 1,000 prisoners be released. I just can't help but think about how that the Word of God said, He that sows to the wind reaps a whirlwind. Well, in Israel's case, we did reap the whirlwind because we sowed the, to the wind. We tried and planted the Spirit that was, in, that was in Yeshua, that Spirit of God. We planted it. And we reap the whirlwind. Imagine what's going to happen, though, with you trying to release all these demons on the earth. I can only imagine. I'm Stephen Bendenoon. You're watching Israel live. Baruch Hashem.